This is the case of adenomatoid tumor. It is a benign tumor of mesothelial origin. Both men and women can be affected. If it affects men, it is commonly paratesticular tumor, as is also uh, the localization of this case. The, tum the tumor is relatively well circumscribed, but non encapsulated. On higher magnification, we can see that the tumor is composed of gland like or tubular empty spaces. Some of them resemble vascular channels like here. Um, vascular like empty spaces are lined by flattened mesothelial cells. And here we can see also gland like spaces lined by cuboidal cells. And uh, some of these mesothelial cells have epithelioid appearance. The nuclei of these cells are bland, uh, round or oval shaped. Nucleoli are not prominent. There are no mitotic figures, no atypia, no atypical mitotic figures. And in between uh, the cells, we commonly see uh, chronic inflammation composed of lymphocytes, as we can see it here. Cytoplasm of these cells are amphiphilic or eosinophilic. Some of these smaller empty spaces uh, can resemble intracytoplasmic vacuoles. Uh, so when we have the nuclei next to the vacuole, it can look like signet ring cell. Uh, so signet ring cell carcinoma is one of the differential diagnoses. The intervening stroma is commonly composed of smooth muscle cells or elastic fibers, as, uh, as we can see it here. Lymphocytic infiltration is quite characteristic, um, but in some cases only focal, as we see it here. We recognize a few morphological patterns of adenomatoid tumor. One of them is angiomatoid or canalicular. This is probably uh, this case. A lot of these empty spaces look like vascular channels. They're lined by flattened endothelial cells. Let's have a look at another example of adenomatoid tumor. So this is another case. It is an uh, adenomatoid tumor of the fallopian tube. The lumen of the fallopian tube is here. And this is uh, the relatively well circumscribed but unencapsulated adenomatoid tumor. On higher magnification, it looks much more solid like uh, in comparison with the previous case. So, this is an example of solid pattern composed of epithelioid cells and um, these epithelioid cells still create um, gland-like structures, but the lumina are almost invisible. So epithelioid cells with much more voluminous uh, eosinophilic cytoplasm and, um, and in the stroma in between the gland-like structures. Another pattern is um, adenomatoid or tubular. Um, where we can clearly recognize tubular structures. It is very common to find different pattern in one tumor. And this pattern is commonly associated with signet ring-like cells. The cells of the adenomatoid tumor is, uh, no, are of the mesothelial origin and therefore they would be positive for immunohistochemical stains like coloratinin and pancytokeratin. Vascular markers like CD31 and CD34 would be negative, which is quite useful uh, in cases that resembles, um, resemble vascular tumors. We need to exclude a malignant mesothelioma, uh, which would be associated with uh, necrosis, atypia. Uh, a lot of mitotic figures would be visible and immunohistochemically HBME1 would be positive in malignant mesothelioma and it is negative in an adenomatoid tumor. Cytokeratin would not help us to differentiate um, metastatic adenocarcinoma, so we need to rely on other immunohistochemical markers for adenocarcinoma like CEA, MOC31, and um, of course morphology where uh, 
the cells of the adenoma to the tumors are not atypical and there are no mitotic figures. The germ cell markers would be negative as well in case we want to confuse this tumor with yolk sac tumor, for example. Okay, so that was a brief description of adenomatoid tumor, and thanks for watching.